Hello everyone and welcome to my latest SQL Server Quickie. In today's SQL Server Quickie I want to talk about a very very interesting topic in SQL Server. The possibility to run SQL Server directly on Linux. As you might know Microsoft provided us first that possibility beginning with SQL Server 2017. First of all, I want to show you how Microsoft was able to achieve that goal, to be able to run SQL Server on Linux, and then during a demonstration, I want to show you how easy it is to install, configure, and use SQL Server on Linux. SQL Server on Linux is supported on every major Linux distribution like Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you can run SQL Server on SUSE distributions, you can even run SQL Server on Ubuntu, as I will demonstrate it today. And SQL Server is also supported uh, on the Docker engine. I've already talked about SQL Server on Docker in one of my previous SQL Server quickies. It's very, very important to know that Microsoft has not ported SQL Server to Linux. That's very, very important. When we run SQL Server on Linux, we are running the same SQL Server as we run on Windows. So you are running the same bits and bytes of SQL Server just on Linux. All the major HA technologies are also supported on Linux. You can create failover clustered instances. You can run SQL Server availability groups in combination with the Basemaker technology. You're also getting automatic failovers. Let's talk now. How is it possible to run SQL Server on Linux? As I've said previously, when you run SQL Server on Linux, you're running the same bits and bytes of our Windows-based SQL Server just on Linux. So it's the same unmodified SQL Server. How is that working? Well, first of all, uh, Microsoft uses the SQL OS which was introduced back with SQL Server 2005, so already a very long time ago. And the SQL OS just provides SQL Server an abstraction layer for its thread and memory management. So SQL Server is doing thread and memory management just on its own. But that is just too less to be able to run SQL Server on a different operating system. And therefore, Microsoft uses an additional technology called a library OS, which is coming from a Microsoft research project called the Drawbridge Project. And the idea of a library OS is that the library OS just maps system calls from one operating system to a different operating system. So in our case, SQL Server is implemented on Windows. So SQL Server is using Win32 API calls into the Windows kernel. And the library OS that Microsoft is using just maps those Win32 API calls from the Windows API call to the corresponding system call into the Linux kernel. And therefore, SQL Server just thinks that it runs on Windows, but in reality, it just runs on a different operating system. So in our case, on Linux. And therefore, Microsoft was able to just run the unmodified version of SQL Server on Linux. So this is a very, very interesting approach, and it's very, very powerful, because it wouldn't be possible even for Microsoft to fully board SQL Server from Windows to Linux. That would be an enormous task with a huge amount of work involved and Microsoft wouldn't be able to achieve that. Imagine when Microsoft releases a new service pack for the latest version of SQL Server, they would have to do the same thing for Linux that would not work. And therefore, that approach just to run the unmodified version of our Windows-based SQL Server on Linux. To be able 
To install SQL Server on Linux, Microsoft provides you the MS SQL Server package that you can install with your Linux package manager. So first of all, you have to import uh, the public key of the Microsoft repository. Then you just need a few apt-get uh, commands to update your local repository. And then you install SQL Server directly from the Microsoft repository. An offline installation is also possible. I have tried that once in my life. But trust me, this is not really convenient because of all the various dependencies uh, that SQL Server on Linux has. Okay, so let's switch over now to Linux. And during the demonstration, I want to show you how we can install SQL Server on Linux, how we can configure SQL Server, and finally, how to use SQL Server on Linux. I'm connected here inside Azure Data Studio to a fresh new Linux installation. As you can see, I'm running here Ubuntu uh, 22.04, and that version also supports SQL Server 2022. So our goal is now to install, configure, and run SQL Server. First of all, we have to import the public key of the Microsoft repository. So let's do that. I have to pass in my password because we are running that uh, with uh, super user privileges. In the next step, we get the Microsoft repository where SQL Server 2022 uh, is living. So we run that command. It's done. And now we update our local repository. We just do that with an apt uh, get update command. It takes a few seconds. <coughs> and one problem, as you can see here, that I have encountered is that I have here a missing public key. I have no idea why that is the case but we have here a missing public key. And based on that missing public key, uh, you could normally not install SQL Server. And one workaround that I have found is that I'm just importing with that command that missing public key. So let's do that. We import that missing public key. Now we do again an apt get update command. Now it works without any uh, missing public key. Takes a few seconds. And now we can install SQL Server with the following command. So we do an apt get install and we pass in the name of the package that we want to install. And the name of that package is just MS SQL Server. And that's it. You are installing SQL Server with that one command line. Just think about it. That's very, very powerful in comparison to install SQL Server on Windows, for example. So let's do that. Let's install SQL Server. As you can see, all the dependencies from SQL Server are downloaded. Takes a few seconds. And now SQL Server is already installed on Linux. This took now, in my environment, around a minute. So not very, very long. As you can see, uh, the installation also gives us here the message that we have to configure now SQL Server to complete the setup. Just think about it. First of all, you have to specify somehow which edition of SQL Server you are running. You also have to uh, accept the end user license agreement. And very, very important, you have to set the SA password so that you are able to connect to SQL Server. Therefore, we have to run the following command. We are just run the MS SQL Conf setup. Program. So let's do that. 
First of all, <coughs> we have to specify our SQL Server edition. We take here the developer edition, pass in the value of 2. We have to accept the end user license agreement. Very, very important. So yes, we accept that one. And now we have to provide the SA password. So let's do that. We have to confirm that password. And now SQL Server is configured. So more or less with the setup program, you are doing three things. <coughs> You choose your edition of SQL Server, you accept the end user license agreement, and finally you set the SA password. And as you can see, setup has completed successfully. SQL Server is now starting. Let's verify that SQL Server is running as a background process, as a background service in Linux. So we can see the status of SQL Server with... Whoops, we can see the status of SQL Server with the system cattle status command. Let's do that. And as you can see, our SQL Server is in the state active running since 32 seconds. So let's try now <coughs> to connect to SQL Server. I have here an IP address. Let's check that with the IF config. An, an IP address of where we have it. It's a 201. So let's connect to that IP address. So we pass in that IP address. I pass in the username and the password and I'm hitting the connect button. Let's do that. And we are connected to SQL Server on Linux. As you can see, that's a fresh new installation. We just have our system databases. Let's create a new query and let's do an add add version. As you can see, we are running here SQL Server 2022 CU10. With the CU10 version, SQL Server is supported on uh, Ubuntu 22.04 and you can see that we are running the developer edition on Linux. Just think about it, just within a minute we were able to install and configure SQL Server on Linux. Let's do other things. Let's create a database. Let's create a database called test1. Let's create that one. So as you can see, when we do a refresh, we have our database there. Let's have a look where SQL Server is storing those files. So we do a select star from sys master files. As you can see, we have here all the various files. And as you can see from the column physical name, Linux, of course, has no idea about drive letters. It was, uh, uh, Linux just uses a hierarchy, hierarchy of file system with mount points. And you can see that by default, all our files of our databases, all our system databases, all our application databases are stored in the folder file opt ms SQL data. Let's have a look into that folder. Let's do an ls command. Let's do that. And as you can see, we have here all our database files. We have our master file, model database, we have an msdb database, we have dempdb configured accordingly with four data files because I'm running here Linux in a virtual machine with four CPU cores configured. And we have also the MDF and the transaction log file of the database that we have created previously. So very, very powerful. Let's stop SQL Server. We can do that with a system cattle stop command. We pass in the name of the service, MS SQL Server. We have to provide our password. We do that. 
when we do again a uh, system cattle status command, you can see now that SQL Server is in the inactive state. SQL Server is dead. But that's not bad because we can again start SQL Server. So let's start SQL Server. Again, I have to pass in my password takes a few seconds and afterwards when we check the status of SQL Server again you can see that SQL Server is again in the active running state means we also haven't lost here any data our database that we have created previously is still there so very very powerful as you have seen installing and configuring SQL Server it's just a matter of minutes, maybe even seconds. So this is very, very powerful. I've already talked in the past about SQL Server and Docker containers. With Docker containers, I'm even faster to spin up a new instance of SQL Server. But even here, in a full-blown virtual machine where Linux is running, I'm able to set up SQL Server in a matter of minutes. So this is very, very powerful. And as I've said previously, we are running here the unmodified Windows-based SQL Server. So that SQL Server here has the same feature set and even the same bugs as our SQL Server on Windows. So that's very, very important. And that's the idea of that library OS. The library OS just maps Win32 API calls to the system calls which are part of the Linux kernel. That's the idea. It's just the unmodified version of SQL Server. I hope that you have enjoyed today's SQL Server quickie about SQL Server on Linux. As you have seen, installing, configuring and running SQL Server on Linux is a very, very easy task. It just takes a minute to set up a fully working SQL Server installation. If you want to learn more about SQL Server on Linux, SQL Server on Docker, and even how you can use SQL Server in combination with Kubernetes, I highly recommend to check out my online training about it. So thanks for watching my latest SQL Server quickie. Just leave in the comments how you like it. If you have more questions about it, maybe you can also suggest future topics. So thank you, stay tuned, and see you soon.